So related to my recent discussion with Dr. Amy Johnson and her community online, there's another aspect of this process of self-realization that I wish I had spent a bit more time talking about, and I'd like to spend uh, that time now. Um, that's on the fact that uh, the way we dissolve certain karmic patterns, certain habits of mind or emotion is really through um, not just not finding the right spiritual views to take or finding the right sort of non-dual understanding uh, and then plugging that into to every situation, but rather there is a process of of bringing attention to consciousness itself, to the pure conscious observer that we are, and deepening in that observing capacity and in the stillness and clarity of it, okay? Without that deepening of the stillness and clarity of our consciousness, without that process of becoming more still, more clear, more calm, we are not going to be able to uproot these constantly circling winds of, of uh, negative th thinking and feeling. We're not going to be able to, to uh, dissolve those patterns. And I do say that the aim is to dissolve and transform them. That doesn't mean we are taking a kind of ashamed attitude about them or that we're viewing these things as somehow morally wrong or anything like that. What it means is simply we acknowledge that these are forms of suffering. Uh, my, my thoughts are out of control. My feelings are reactive and they are not loving. They are not happy. They are not peaceful and serene. We have to reckon with that fact. But the whole point of transformation is that we transform through awareness and through understanding. And that is the non-violence of it. That is the the higher consciousness of it versus just, you know, telling yourself over and over again, I want to change. I want to get rid of this pattern. Obviously, that doesn't work. But the point is, you cannot be happy with suffering, with needless suffering. Yes, as I've said, if you are going through grief due to a serious loss in your life, if it's a difficult period uh, for your physical health or your life situation, there is grief involved and that is necessary to go through. And within or behind that grief, there is love. There is hopefully an awareness of love and a loving holding of that grief. But there is also needless neurotic suffering that we, we do not need to tolerate and we cannot enjoy it. We cannot love this miserable uh, suffering within us. We cannot love the experience of being panicked and anxious or depressed and despairing. So we need to take a stance, so to speak, in our inner stillness, in paying attention to the conscious presence that we are, and the first action or effect of that deeper observing stance is to feel more still and to put those patterns in a kind of check. It's to, um, it's to nat naturally almost withdraw energy from the surface uh, machinations of the mind. That naturally happens. And so... That is where this broader, liberated view and experience is really going to come from. 
it's only going to come from your your direct experience of transformation and deepening consciousness where you you experience that i am consciously dissolving this misery within me not by going to war with it not by just telling myself to be better to feel happier to think positive thoughts no but by taking a deeper stance in my consciousness and it's from there that we can reckon with our existential angst and our life situation in a more deep and honest way what am i creating in my life what is really bothering me and what perhaps needs to change and so when we look at our suffering and when we when we say i, I want to become conscious or i want to awaken a lot of what that means is that we no longer want to be ruled by heavy moods or reactive emotions and conversely by or relatedly by confused thinking we want to understand we want to come to an essential understanding and what i help people to do what i can invite you to do now is to cultivate this inner stillness that transforms the reactive emotions we want to in a sense contain those reactive feelings hold them witness them but don't keep indulging them and neither should you keep indulging the negative self-destructive habits that flow from those reactive emotions so in our rea in our relations with other people with people close to us in our work and so forth we're having all kinds of intense reactions we're getting ourselves um angry we're reacting to what our partner said we need to put that in check and come to a more conscious clear-minded and loving uh, stance where we can say I hear what you're saying I'm not sure that's true but here's what I'm feeling here's what I think is true etc and we come to this kind of sobriety and self-responsibility for for our deep experience and what I see in the transformative process of stillness of deepening stillness and consciousness is that the reactive emotions get replaced by clear-minded wisdom and by real love now the stillness initially when I talk about being still it may not sound like love to you it may not sound very juicy or exciting or you know warm but the stillness I'm referring to is the presence of your own being. It's the presence of your own heartfulness, your own feeling, and it is the way that we recover sensitivity. And we need to recover sensitivity from the reactive emotions. The, the reactive emotions are not the expression of our sensitivity or deep consciousness. They're surface they're rough they're crude reactions we need to recover real sensitivity of heart and feeling and that's done through stillness through through a presence of being that can properly and fully digest the contents of our intellectual and emotional experience and in so far as we do that we we become we regain that sensitivity of feeling where we can say this is what i'm feeling about our relationship this is this is what feels right to me to do or this is the way in which i want to live we we can become more childlike and more we can regain a certain innocence of heart and a responsiveness to life and we can learn a fidelity to our nature to our character type to the ways in which 
we most easily thrive in the world. Not giving way to our worst tendencies, but honoring that within us, that within our temperament, that simply is our uh, ideal way of being, the way in which we feel the most effective, uh, nurtured, enriched, and so forth. And so my point is, there is no real higher view, non-dual view, spiritual consciousness, unless you deepen in this capacity of stillness and presence and meditative seeing. Unless, you know, they, they study the brain waves and they, they know that when the, mind, the, when the mind state is dominated by beta brain waves, there is a lot of anxiety. And that can only be transformed by the presence of alpha brain waves and theta and delta that, that are the deeper and slower brain waves that bring clarity, flow, focus or deep serenity and even wisdom. You have to get that experience in order to have any real confidence that this kind of unitive consciousness is real. Without you getting that experience, without you actually experiencing the transformation of your mind states through consciousness, it's all just intellectual. Oh, I should think about, I should see it as just life happening. I should see everything as one. I should think of it this way. That is just intellectual. We need to have the experience of deepening into ourself and, and transforming our mind state from reactive, fragmented, dissatisfied, anxious, despairing, and depressed to conscious, consciously aware, insightful, present, slower, but also more vital, more able to act, more uh, courageous, more aligned with all the aspects of our personality that have proven over time to be stable and real. And this is what is meant by psycho-spiritual integration and self-actualization. Thank you.